Yo, welcome to another goddamn video on my channel. People, I told you the YouTube is gonna be back inconsistent and full effect and all that. Get me. But anyway, we are on the way to Manchester. Train vibes, you know what I mean? Traveling things. But yeah, on the way to Manchester, gonna link up with Ross, Kean, Ryan, all the boys. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna get like a little bit of a vlog vibe. Maybe you might get some ideas of what's gonna be happening for the future the plans for the rest of this prep yeah man we're getting leaner ready we're like three weeks into this diet calories have been dropped again today or from today i should say some carbs have been dropped out but we you know what i mean we're still vibing we're still living we're feeling good we're only behind the camera so yeah let's get it bro i feel like we should roll like a little fucking montage or like something you know what i mean let's just make it look cool bro feel me Bro, the train is 10 minutes late, yeah? And we are on a very tight schedule. We need to get to the Airbnb and then get to uh, Link Kean for 12. Well, really and truly, we need to get to the gym for 12 because he has a call at 3. And this train has shagged us by 10 minutes. Now, we almost actually missed this entire trip because of Ronnie, yeah? Ronnie made us late by, well, he, like, I told him to get to the train station for 7.45 and he got to the train station at oh, uh, 7.03. The train was meant to come at 7.03, but lucky for Ronnie's ass, the train was delayed till 7.08. So we somehow made it here on time, made our train, but the train's still late. So it's just a whole day of delay, but I've got a positive mindset. I think that we're gonna have an amazing trip. We gonna be all right. I um, ticket. Yeah, yeah, I had two tickets, this one and this one. Okay, um, if you just move to the side over here, I'll get someone to print it out for you. Yeah? Flex your mum. Nah, it was just better. It had a thing out before. Yeah, that's fine. I'll print that one for you. Just yeah? Oh, it is a collection code. Why is it? Why is it a switch to a collection code? Yeah, Even when they were like, when I was in London, in Houston, they were like to me, "Oh yeah, you have to, you can't use the ticket for the underground." I was like, "Why not?" It's I bought it and it's the view, and he said, "No, you have to print it out." I was like, yeah. "How's that make a difference?" Just, you, you can see it. Just let me through. <laughs> I think this day has been a day of delays. Thank you very much, my man. I got to you That was a whole waste of goddamn time. They could have just let me through, bro. I blame you because I had a normal ticket until I bought you a ticket. All right, guys, so we just got to the Airbnb. It's time to get to the gym, so we'll catch you in the gym, boys. There's also a scale there, so I'm very gassed. Get some morning weights and stuff. All right, cool, so we are now linking up with Ross. About to be a goddamn, you're about to see the most littest apartment ever. I think that we gotta go up straight upstairs to Ross's, so I think we should make like a little cool B-roll. Just have a whole bunch of little cool B-rolls just running. All right, and, uh, you, you see what like um uh like Russ says? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, Ronnie, run that shit. Good boy. Have you been have you been learning? Are you lot you lot better? Hmm? <laughs> uh, he loves the camera though. He's a he's a little superstar. He loves the camera. I'm happy with I'm really happy with this. Like I feel like I've never I know we were gonna start in eight weeks out, but then giving you that one or two weeks I think it's perfect. No, I think it's perfect. And then best case best case scenario, we're you know, four weeks early. Yeah. Fill out. <laughs> this is, you, oh wow, I can't believe I'm the star of a movie today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I started recording when you said it was three voices. You think of the beating. Listen, listen, no one knows racism better than Irish people and black people. Yeah, that's what we've got. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were in England though, on a yeah. off. Listen, we, that's why the the uh, the flags are so similar. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> One well, color difference. Yeah. Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, let's get it. Sake, you crack on there, bud. All right, so uh, yeah, we're just gonna go through the plan with Russ. So yeah, so, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you take it from here. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll crack on. So yeah, obviously just off the back of a pretty short stint of an off season, we came off the back of the pro qualifier. 
we knew there was going to be a lot of traction kind of socially behind the M as well. Um, so a lot of things have kind of picked up a lot of eyes on them. So that was part of the reason that we decided to do the prep. You know, in a, in a raw bodybuilding sense, like if you're looking at this from a solely bodybuilding perspective, we probably would have finished off the pro qualifier, ran a health phase, and then actually just extended the off-season throughout the rest of the year. But there's uh, there was multiple strings to pull that could have led us down the direction that we're going here with this. You know, we have an opportunity here with the amount of eyes on and the the level of kind of drive and motivation to see where we stand is one of the things that kind of led us to that place as well. Like, there's no doubt in anyone's mind that Yemi is one of the most genetically gifted athletes that people are ever going to see. So the fact that he's going to get there isn't really a question. You know, we know he's going to get there. When is really the question. You know, it's not really a case of if, it is just when. So with us, we just wrapped up the off season at the end, uh, about two or three weeks ago, we, we ran a small stint of pulling the back for a couple of days and just give it like, freshening things up, just getting the body ready to rock and roll. And then we've led into the last kind of two or so weeks um, with nine weeks to go. So it's roughly an 11 to 12 week prep, which based off the data that we have from Yemi, we, it, it's gonna be more than enough. Uh, he pulls off quick and he puts it on quick. So we'll run about nine weeks from here. Um, we have had the last two weeks, a little bit less sort of any kind of androgen load has been pulled right, right down. We'll start escalating that now early from next week and just start letting that titrate and do a little bit of work for us. So, you know, Yemi's really running at about 60% of what he can be running at now, if even. Um, so we'll keep running it through, we'll make some adjustments leading into next week. Um, food is still pretty fine. Um, it's a lot less than he was eating, so there's a little bit of kickback there in terms of, you know, overall kind of hunger signal and stuff like that. We also have a couple of different tools in play that might drive that overall hunger signal up a little bit higher, um, but we will pull that back as we go. But the game plan from here is to kind of get the... The, the kind of the real trigger pulled by the start point of next week. Um, just given that initial two weeks, just to assess rate of loss, like what a lot of people don't realize when it comes to a prep is that initial rate of loss that comes off the back of the first kind of seven to 14 days is largely just food volume. Um, it's the shift in like, you know, glycogen resynthesis that isn't going to be as heavy pushing into tissues because the food volume is so much lower. So inevitably you're going to see this big initial kickback, which is exactly what we've seen from him. I think we've seen like four or five kilos being pulled off in the first like eight to nine days, but now it's stalling and it's holding itself a little bit more steady. If you're continually seeing four or five kilos of loss with a pro every week for four or five weeks, you're doing something fucking wrong, <laughs> you know, <laughs> pull it back, feed that bitch and let him keep going. But the game plan will be to get food down to a place that we can guarantee the rate of loss is going to be at a certain kind of percentile of his total body weight. And then if that gets beyond that percentile to a rate that we really need to control, feed them up with a high increase of carbohydrates across a 24 to 48 hour period and just run it that way because there's, there's loads of ways to skid a cat. In this case, there's loads of ways to skid a yemi. So in this way, we're going to go and we're going to pull it back as much as we need to. to <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> <laughs> in this sense, we're going to pull it back to a way that we know that rate of loss is going to be assertive enough that we see those visual changes regularly. And then as we need to, as performance drops off, we'll top up a carbohydrate, allow the body to keep going and just run it in that way. Um, we'll probably be ready. Well, I hope we'll be ready for about kind of two, 10 days out because we've left less time for prep and more time to improve. And inevitably, that means that your prep is going to run different. You know, your, your off season is essentially going to be a reflection of your prep and vice versa. So however you run the off season, whether you push it really, really short relative to the next prep, you're going to have a shorter prep if you're going to give yourself as much time as possible to make advantage of that more productive environment, more food, generally a higher androgen load, you know, less output. And right this situation, we have less food, less androgen load, more output. So you got to kind of play the field as much as you possibly can. But we're going to keep running through this. You know, I think Yem is going to train over the course of the next couple of days, so we'll keep tabs on things. Um, I'm sure by the end of this video, I think this is one of day one of a probably two-day video or one-day video or whatever, we'll have a little bit more of an update on what we're going to do for the next couple of weeks. But as of right now, it's fucking smooth sailing. Everything's going well. Yemi's holding fullness with, you know, a lot less tools in the toolbox in play. So once a lot more things go in and once we kind of relay a little bit more of the advantageous kind of tools that we do have on the table, things are going to move from there. And it actually wouldn't surprise me if Yemi's body weight creeps up a little bit for a couple of weeks and then doesn't really veer away from where it is now. Um, it'd be interesting to see if we can keep Yemi above the kind of 90, 91 kilo mark, considering he is 94, 95 now. You know, he probably has about four or five kilos of fat to pull off, but the relative impact of the adjustments that we will make over the course of the next couple of weeks should allow that to creep back up and stay up. But like I said, all is moving well, all is good. We're on our way to the muscle contest on the 13th of May, back to my homeland. We're going to go meet my ma. Um, so that's priority number one. Olympic qualification is second. Uh, so, um, most contest in Limerick, 13th of May. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Get two birds stoned at once. <laughs> two birds, one stone, one stone. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit. <laughs> 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 Insert set rolling. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snoop Dogg and Wiz Khalifa. I'm definitely said wrong because I'm a white guy as well. <laughs> now, we'll go by the 13th of May, uh, back to Muscle Contest, and the result of that will give us an indication of what we're going to do going forward. If we can kind of land into that kind of top four or five or whatever, then we probably know that we have a shot to continue throughout the rest of the season. But if it pushes back and the placings are kind of not what we came there looking for, We'll run a rebound into the point of the year and then look at a final Olympic qualifier towards the latter end of the year just to, you know, really give it one more go. And at the end of the day, if that doesn't run its course, an off-season, Yemi's there. Do you know that kind of way? That's when the if and the when, you know, really start to come in because it's not a case of if, it's a case of when. But we're going to give it everything we have for the rest of the year and the result of the 13th of May will kind of dictate how the rest of the year is going to look. But I'm hopeful. Yemi's hopeful. Everything's moving. He's responsive. You know, the Yemi's life is in a good place. Everything's moving good. So it's going to be good. About the fact that I'm gonna be doing a show in Limerick, and he's he's from Limerick, kind of. kind of. So he went uni in Limerick, and he's telling me that you see people walking around with ballys and on the back of horses, just rubbing people off of horses, no, I'm, I'm, horse I'm, I'm, horse and carriage, and that just yeah, going man, crazy. On the back of horses, all like the the travelers, like the gypsies. Is that what they're called? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're I don't know what you call them. Yeah, 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 like they're all just going around the back of horses, just around the city, and that. <laughs> he's selling it to me. <laughs> I, might, I, I might get my pro win and then get rubbed on the way home for my trophy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they give me a sword for my trophy, then I could just use it to like cut down people on their horses. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, cool. So me and Keen are about to fuck delts up Enjoy. and arms. And that. <laughs> yeah, we're about to have a crazy arm, delt, chest, pump. You're about to see... Um, a lot of a lot of gorging muscles and uh, blood flow. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Other than that, I'm enjoying the scenes of Manchester's back alleys that look like they've not been touched for like a millennia. <laughs> but yeah, let's get it. Hey, I'm kind of just called to hear your voice, so I feel kind of dumb, but uh. I miss you. I can, all I'm saying is this is about to be a good fucking session. You can feel it already. You know when the lateral raises are fucking hitting? There's no way you're gonna have a bad session. Bro, I'm sweating. I don't understand. I don't. And then it's just gonna taper off slowly by by May. Way heavier, yeah. way heavier. Because like, if you saw what I looked like when I started my prep last year, compared to where I'm at now, night and day, same weight, but night and day, really? night and day. Yeah. Like, I literally looked like I didn't even train really. Like, I was hitting like the front shots, and it was like, if I told you I was gonna go pro, you'll be like, you're lying. You know what I mean? But after that, like, but like, I get to this point where I kind of get in my groove. And I just start growing in prep, 
it's like when I'm, it's like when my food's kind of low, but I'm not like super shredded. And I get like, I have that look where I'm lean, is, but... In that fight, you're going to do like, you're more efficient. Because yeah, you have yeah. less body fat as well. Exactly. And you're going to be more responsive than you do. So exactly. That, that middle point of prep where... Yeah, that's where prep. everything is like the best. Yeah. Like from now till like, four weeks out, phenomenal. Like, you drop off all like that fatigue. Yeah. Like gaining and yeah. you know, just focusing and, and having all that food in you. Cause yeah. I, I'll be honest, I feel way more efficient when I'm doing my cardio and I'm training heavy and I've got not that much food in my belly. Yeah. When you're eating 5,000, even 4,000 calories. Like, yeah. Like, I have yeah. Process. Yeah. I don't have yeah. The food in the system. Yeah. System. And then I just start giving myself fucking mental preps and like mental talks yeah. and shit. Like, you know them like fucking, like sometimes I feel like in my head I'm in one of their mood, like you know them like, the moods where they're about to give like a massive speech. Yeah. I feel like I'm in one of those. Friday <laughs> night or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so like, right. Yeah. What's the one with, um, what's the one with Adam Sandler? He's like, I love this game. There's a whole bunch of guys obsessed with this game. Yeah, that one. Oh, yeah, the, the, the new one. No, yeah, the new wait, one that was on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, that speech is lit, bro. But that's me basically in my head. When I'm on the stairs, I'm like, bro, you yeah. can't fucking fail. Can't Everybody miss. wants you to fucking fail right now. You can't let them fucking win. And then I end up getting shredded. <laughs> <laughs> you come all this way, have one bad day, and you're ready to back down? You love this game. I mean, love it with your whole heart. Because if you don't, let's not even bother. Let's not open that door. They're just going to slam it right in our face. I love this game. I live this game. And there's a thousand other guys waiting in the wings who are obsessed with this game. Obsession is going to be talent every time. You got all the talent in the world. But are you obsessed? Is it all you ever think about? Let's face it, it's you against you out there. When you walk on that court, you have to think I am the best guy out there. I don't care if LeBron's playing. So let me ask you again, do you love this game?